Hi everybody, it's Mrs. Williams and today we're going to learn about engineering notebooks. We're also going to learn about how engineers use a series of steps called the engineering design process to help them solve problems like how to build a robot. Alright, let's get started. First of all, whether you're building a robot during the summer or if you're building during the school year in classrooms or after school practice, every day you need to be documenting in an engineering notebook. Now I know students don't love doing this, but this is an important skill that engineers use in the real world. This is an engineering notebook that comes from the REC Foundation and they've provided some sample pages to show you what documentation can look like. Let's take a closer look at the sample pages provided in this notebook. First of all, you will notice that there's some sample entries and every time an engineer or a student documents their progress, their learning, their ideas, anything involved with the engineering design process in the notebook, you will see that there is a date associated with that journal entry. You will also notice that there's text and drawings, images, to explain and convey your ideas. There are also measurements and annotations, mathematical equations to calculate torque and speed or whatever you're testing. You will also notice that there's these crossed out areas. I often call them uh, hash marks. And what they are showing is that there should be no white areas left in your notebook. If you have a page and you are going to complete it from top to bottom, left to right, and there's some white area that you don't want to fill, then you need to put these hash marks or crossed, very neatly crossed out areas to say that this page is done and I'm not going to go back and fill anything in these white areas. You will also notice that there's some initials by those crossed out areas saying that yes, I officially wanted to cross this area out. If there's a mistake, you can simply cross it out with one line. All mistakes are actually required to remain in the notebook. But if it's a spelling mistake, you can simply cross it out with one line and also initial it, meaning I did intend to cross that out. Yes, it was a mistake. Don't be embarrassed about mistakes. Mistakes are going to happen all of the time. That's actually how we learn. So we like to see mistakes in engineering notebooks. You will also see on the next sample page that it is okay to paste in images or tape them in into your notebook. Now none of these pages can be removed. They need to be bound into a notebook that keeps the notebook pages in at all times. If you make a mistake on page 67, you don't just get to rip it out and, and throw it away. We want to keep that notebook page in there. Just cross out your mistakes like I said. But notice on these sample pages, you can see that there are taped in pictures that were printed out from the internet or a taped in drawing that maybe I decided to draw on a piece of graph paper or regular white paper and I want to paste it into the notebook. That is perfectly acceptable, but it must be considered permanent. You don't take it in and change it. It stays in there on the day that you're documenting that part of the process. Let's take a look at the bottom of the page now. You will notice there's a spot for project. Now this kind of is the summary of the portion of the design process that you're in right now. So this one says drivetrain modification. So obviously what's happening on this page, they're modifying the drivetrain. Then it says design by. This is who created this page or made the entries in the notebook. Now if you have multiple team members creating entries, then just use the person who finished the page, who uh, did the last entry and cleaned it up and they said okay I'm done and they put their name then you have a witness another team member a parent somebody who's witnessing that yes you are done with this page there's no white space left you've completed everything and you're now going to sign it off and date it now in the real world engineers use this process to prove that everything in their notebook is an original idea and this comes in very handy when you're trying to patent an idea and get the credit for be, having an original idea out there. Now, although we're not going to patent our robots in Vex Robotics, it's definitely a good habit to make sure you sign and get a witness to sign every page to show that your ideas are original. The next thing I want to talk about is the engineering design process. You've heard me mention it several times already. The engineering design process is a series of steps that helps engineers solve pretty complicated problems. It helps provide an approach to a problem and gives you some structure into how you go about solving that problem. You will find online many different versions of the engineering design process if you do a Google search. It might have a six-step approach or a 12-step approach. 
But in TOSD, we have found that the following nine-step approach has been very beneficial with notebooking. So let's dive into each of these steps in a little bit more detail. The first step we're going to look at is define the problem. When you define the problem, what you're trying to do is come up with a problem statement that describes the robot you're trying to build, what you want it to do, how it's going to score, how it's going to pick up the game field elements. So those are important things to document in your notebook. You also want to list the criteria and constraints. Now criteria are the things that you must have, like it must be built out of VEX parts. The constraints are your limitations, like you can only build a robot to be a certain size, or you may only use so many motors. Now it's important to always go back and refer to these criteria and constraints to make sure you're not going outside of these boundaries, because often students will forget and build the robot maybe just a little bit too big. Next, we're going to talk about steps two and three, brainstorm and research. Sometimes these steps can be combined. When you brainstorm, it is very important that you list all of your ideas. No ideas are bad ideas. And these ideas come from your head. They don't come from looking online and Google searching. That is what we consider research. Now, you may collaboratively or independently brainstorm and research but eventually you'll need to come together with your team and share these ideas. But make sure you do those brainstorms first, otherwise once you go online, all those great ideas vanish from your head and all you can see is what's presented online. Step number four is to develop ideas. Now you take all of your ideas from your brainstorm and all of your ideas from your research and you combine them together to come up with some amazing ideas. Now, it doesn't matter if you are the best sketcher in the world or if you're just starting out, but you must draw your ideas to communicate them. It is also very important that you include dimensions, labels, anything that can help you communicate your ideas to your team. Step number five is choose the best idea. Now we're going to go into detail on many of these steps in later videos, but choosing the best idea needs to come down to criteria. You don't just pick the best idea because it's the one you like the most. You have to look at how it fits into the criteria and constraints, how feasible it is to build it, how many materials you have to support these ideas, and of course, whether or not your coach thinks it's something that you are able to do in the time constraints that you have. Now, there are ways of doing this where you just vote, or you can use a more complicated approach using decision matrices. We'll talk about that in another video. Step number six is to build your prototype. Now, finally, you get to build. Generally, we go through steps one through five in a linear order until we get to step six. Now that we're at step six, we begin to build. We use all of our ideas from our notebook as a resource to help us while we go through the building process. Finally, you're at step number seven, to test your ideas. You must have a robot now that's functioning to be able to go onto the field and test. Maybe all you have is a chassis, which is perfectly fine. You put it on the field and you do a speed test. Or you see if the motors work, if it goes forward when you code it to go forward. So once you test, you're going to document your results in your notebook in a data table or some other way to show your test results. Then you'll go back to the building process and improve your prototype. Now you will sit here in this build, test, improve cycle over and over for many iterations. It seems like it's a never ending process because honestly, it doesn't really end until the season ends. I think this is a good time to talk about the fact that the engineering design process is not linear or circular, meaning it doesn't go in a perfect circle. Now generally we do use steps one through five to get us to building because it gives us some structure to get there. But once you begin to build, you might find that your ideas are not working and you need to jump all the way back to research or to brainstorm and come up with some new ideas. Or you may find that you just simply need to go back to your developed ideas or your decision matrix and choose a different idea that you've already developed. The idea here is, is that you're not stuck in a step of the engineering design process, that you can jump around to any step as needed. Now the final step of the engineering design process is to communicate your ideas. And we've been doing that all along with our notebooks. However, the notebooks are very important to help you communicate ideas not only to one another on your team, but also to judges at tournaments. 
You will find when you go to an official tournament that talking to judges is one of the most stressful and rewarding parts of your experience, and your notebook can help you prep for your interviews. You also need to make sure that everybody on your team is ready to answer any question about the engineering design process and that every person on your team has also contributed to writing in the notebook. That's it for this video. I know this is a lot, but we're going to go in deeper into each of these steps in future videos. Alright everybody, good luck with your notebooks. Have a great day.